Dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the studio of the Sabbath School Department by the General Conference. We're together with our dear brother Shurima. He came all the way from Africa. He's our divisional leader of the African continent and also member of the ministerial department. We work together on the Sabbath School lessons and, and other doctrinal issues that need to be clarified. And I'm very happy you're here. Welcome, Brother Shirima. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, we would like to begin our study. We have a wonderful Sabbath School lesson today. Beware of emotional false revivals. And we're going to see today about uh, what uh, is a revival, what is a false revival. And the next Sabbath School will be about the real uh, revival uh, based on the Spirit of God. So. Be tuned on these uh, videos. Uh, we have very important messages uh, to, to share with you with the help of the Lord. But now we want to begin with a silent prayer and invite the presence of the Lord with us. Amen. <clears throat> Be, 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 beware of emotional and false revivals is the title and I wish that we do um, a general overview on the lesson uh, we have uh, several under titles the introduction of the lesson is true and false revivals as I already mentioned we're going to see what is actually a revival and then we're going to also uh, think about the true and false revivals. Remember that the entire um, lessons or the entire topic, the general topic of the Sabbath School lessons is revival and reformation. And uh, also let's keep in mind that these lessons have to do with a historical event of the origin of the reform movement with all the troubles and trials uh, that have taken place in the First World War <coughs> and the origin of the Reformation was called by God. So, the true and false revivals is the subject of the first under title and with the help of the Lord we need to clarify this in our Sabbath School lessons to the visitors in the Sabbath School. The second under title, avoiding emotionalism and sen sensationalism. We need to find out what is emotionalism and what is the sensationalism and uh, that's very important that we clarify that to our students. It also it's important to make clear why the emotions are so misleading and why the spiritual revival is different than the emotional. But with the help of the Lord we have until question number five on this topic. And then have the deceptive snares uh, as, as you know, these lessons are uh, quite long, 10 questions, so it's very, very detailed, um, detailed distribution of the topic, and we have a lot of point of views directed to the, to the subject. And this is now, uh, in this under title, we're going to see different uh, snares or dangers that, uh, in, in which the person can be deceivingly thinking that he is part of a spiritual revival and unfortunately he's not and how you can find out what is the real revival and what is not. Uh, the next under title is similar to the other ones, the shield from deception which is the solution and the only um, possible uh, refuge in, from such a, a false revivals and reformations but not only that, but in general, the last question is very important because it's the positive close-up and the whole topic. And not only that, but uh, it's giving hope to each one of us and, and it is a Christ-centered uh, um, subject which we don't want to lose from our, uh, fr from our Sabbath School lesson. But now we're happy to be together with Brother Shirim. And we would like to comment more in details, question by question, and uh, we will enjoy also his comments. The first question is, what is prophesied concerning the race and supposed um, prophets 
who will even reform sins and so signs perform signs and wonders and what false religion revival or religious revival will sweep the world in the last days what kind of prophecy Sharima, we found in the Bible of course there are many prophecies we cannot touch all of them mm -hmm. but we have something mentioned here in Matthew chapter 24 which indicate the in general the basic or the most important thank you the prophecy which we maybe we can take as a fundamental for this phenomenon or for this uh, science of times is the prophecy of Jesus himself when he was uh, uh, explaining the signs of the last days, signs of the second coming. So one of the things he said specifically is that uh, there shall arise false Christ and false prophets and they shall show great and the wonder, wonders and such that they will also deceive the very elect. So what we see today taking place in this world among the Christian churches is what Jesus had prophesied some 2,000 two years ago and now we can see the fulfillment that nearly all the churches have prophets, have uh, this um, emotional, emotional sensations and also they are performing wonders. I was really shocked recently when I was uh, watching some movie that this spirit of uh, sensation have also entered the catholic church which had was remaining uh, without these things but all churches from, from pentecostal churches from protestant churches and now to catholic all of these ch churches have been taken sweep by this uh, kind of spirit thank you very much uh, very sharima very interesting Actually, the testimony given here relates the totes to the nominal Adventists, and it is very interesting, this testimony in early writings, it's a vision of Sister White, says, I saw that God have honest children among the nominal Adventists and the fallen churches. It's interesting that Sister White see that there is apostasy, they will be apostasy among the Seventh-day Adventists, and she is combining this nominal Adventist with the apostasy churches. Yeah. Uh, it is uh, interesting, or, or we need to consider the context of this testimony. This nominal Adventist usually, Sister White, uh, it relates it to the Millerites, to those Adventists that did not accept the second and the third angel message. But it's a, also it's a phenomenal that they, this Millerite does not exist anymore today and Sister White see them existing until the end of the world and uh, until the second coming of Christ and uh, having very strong influence in the persecution of the people of God at the end of time. So obviously this nominal Adventist does not apply only to the Millerites, but it uh, has a much more extended understanding. That's why this testimony is very important to be considered in our Sabbath School lesson <clears throat> today. The second question says, when it is time for God's true revival, what will Satan do that will his deceptions be like? What is going to happen? before the very, very, very big spiritual revival takes place, Brother Sharima. Yes, the Bible warns us very categorically that uh, when we see, uh, when Satan knows that it's the time for the true revival, he will march ahead to bring in false reformations, or false yes. revivals, so that uh, people, God's people, or the elect ones, may get misled, thinking that those are the prophesied uh, revivals, but uh, we are warned that we should understand, differentiate between the work of Satan and the true revival. It's because uh, especially we needed to know the basic of a true revival. True revival uh, is, is dwells on the principles, on the Ten Commandments 
and and uh, and uh, people should deliver the principles. But when we see people are violating the principles of God, they're violating the Ten Commandments. At the same time, they are writing some revivals, they are writing some signs and wonders. We can understand that that is a good symptom or sign that that comes from Satan. Thank you very much. It's interesting, a revival that's not based on the truth, not based on scripture, yeah. but based on emotions yeah. and other, other kind of attractions. Let's yeah. say, here is a testimony of the great controversy, and this is very interesting too. Just some lines of the, of the testimony. It says, before the final visitation of God's judgment upon the earth, they will be among the people of the Lord, such a revival of um, primitive godliness. Yes. I just want to stress that topic. We always push this kind of revivals in the fallen churches. Mm -hmm. And that is true. That's what Matthew, especially mm -hmm. Matthew 24, talks about mm -hmm. false Christ, false prophet. But when we see great controversy, it says that the final visitation of the judgment of power, they will be among the people of the Lord, such a revival of primitive godliness. So, not only outside of the church, but even inside of the church, they will be revivals that are false revivals. And why are they false? Because they are not based on the deep dedication, religious dedication, but they are based on the primitive godliness. It's just showing up external uh, uh, appearance, uh, uh, um, appearances of, of goodliness. <clears throat> and it says, the enemy of souls desire to hinder his work and before the time of such a movement shall come, he will end the war to prevent it by introducing the introducing as a counter fight. And uh, there's a doctrinal differences, uh, it's foreign theologies and, and, and teachings and revival many times takes place because people uh, uh, have this um, a, this kind of um, chip gospel mm -hmm. we call, you know, once safe, forever safe, right, yeah. and the people run with big numbers of people get baptized easily so this kind of revivals is mentioned here. The question number three says, why do supernatural phenomena work in favor of the false revivals? Very interesting because in the time of Elijah, we remember uh, Elijah went and to, to com confront mm -hmm. the false prophets of ba Baal and uh, fire comes from heaven and confirm the miracle confirm the true prophet <clears throat> but now we see here that the false revivals they are confirmed by phenomena or supernatural events and why did that happen brother Sharimo? how we can explain that to our teachers and and ministers Yes, that happens so. First, when we consider the text given in Revelation 13, 13 and 14, we see that Satan will uh, use that approach to bring false re revival. And he liked that because that is a superficial. It works from outside. That doesn't touch inside of our inner hearts. So Satan will use to to arouse sensation, to arouse emotion, to arouse this sort of uh, outside uh, um, emotions, to 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 attract the people, to make people think that the down Satan is working. But uh, in in the in, in the text, it is mentioned that that is the work of uh, demons. Satan will use this supernatural power of employing all powers of the demons, fallen angels, in gathering all the, the people from churches up to, uh, up to the world, including the kings of the earth. And now he goes, these people will see a great agitation, a great, uh, some sort of revival, 
and think this is from God with a lot of miracles. And this is, uh, is, is a good sign Satan will, will attract people and get capture of them, but he will not touch the inner part to arouse spirituality in their hearts. Thank you very much. Interesting that uh, it's permitted, actually, the Lord permits Satan to do that. And this is also very well visible here in the great controversy. Fearful sign of supernatural char character will soon be revealed in the heavens. And talking of power, miracles, working demons. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's as it says in Revelation chapter 12 also, and that uh, the devil comes very furious on earth because he knows he has a little time. Now he applies all the strength, all the power he has to deceive, if possible, the very elected ones. Yeah. And also from other sides, the people of God need to understand that there is no the miracles they need to rely on. It's not the supernatural things they need to look for. The most important things is the truth, the truth. which God has given us. The, yes. the, the, the real uh, character, Christ-like character, is what the Lord is looking for. Not the other things are just different tools that have helped us or guide us in the, in the way. <clears throat> Question number four says, what means will be the power of evil used to achieve their deceptive goals as emotional or <clears throat> sensational preaching recommended by the spirit of the or recommended by the spirit of the Lord. So what kind of means? It's kind of extension of question number three because we see what happened. But how did Satan will do this miracle? So what kind of means he's going to use? Yes, the means he will use is mentioned in the text which I mentioned in Matthew 24 as well as in 2 Peter that he will use false prophets. False prophets will increase it to such an alarming numbers that it's very hard for people to, 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 to escape. I can, I can testify this that I've seen in more, all churches as I mentioned before that you will see in the Pentecostal churches where in the first, they did first, but also it is uh, spread to all Protestant churches. All have prophets, have, have all these people who are miracle, wrote miracles. <coughs> and uh, now what happened is, you mentioned in the text, that they will uh, arouse people to, 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 to miracles, to signs, but not, they will not have the experience of the knowledge of the truth. So, and they will not do the, 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 the truth, but they will rely completely on miracles, miracles, miracles. This is what we see in the modern Christianity today. People are after miracles, but they, they are not after the word of God, the truth, which will uh, change their lives by uh, following what God wants us to do. I just want to read you just one little sentence there, which says that, but there will be, there were many prophets and also among the people, even as there, there shall be false teachers among you. They're not, in the spirit of prophecy, are they, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So God wants us to be followers of the word and doing the word, not follow miracles, not follow uh, these super, supernatural uh, sensations. Yeah. Thank you very much. This is very interesting. So not only the demons and satans will do all these miracles, but they will have their mediums. They Medium, will have yeah. uh, their prophets. And unfortunately, even inside the churches, as, as I understand the testimony here, is that even inside of the churches, they will be a false doctrine and, and, and disturbers that will actually try to prevent a real revival to take place. <clears throat> Continuing forwards, let's uh, see the next question, what it says. It's question number five. What it says in one who cannot control his emotions? And what are the emotions not trustworthy? What is 
why is the emotion so negatively taking here, Brother Sharima? What uh, maybe little little explanation? What's actually uh, takes place? What emotions are? Yes, uh, emotions is such uh, something that uh, um, arouses external external agitation, not under not the mental or spiritual. Um, uh, settlement. So we find many times, uh, maybe I give example, if you go to these uh, Pentecostal churches, you find first they begin with music. And with the music they sing a lot of uh, songs such people are really mesmerized. And once they are mesmerized and uh, they start singing hallelujah and all these things, they feel that they are blessed. They say well, I'm blessed because of the sensations. But in actual fact, uh, they know a uh, very little of the truth. So, this is what the, uh, we are told here that it, it, if you cannot control yourself, you are, you are dancing, you are singing only, but you don't take something to, to mind to reason how does this help me spiritually, then you do not have a control of yourself. You are just uh, following emotion, but not uh, control of your mind. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, it's interesting also the second part of the questions. Why, the, why are the emotions not trustworthy? It's actually because very, they're very deceptive and changeable. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes they depend on the weather. It, it's a nice sunshine, you feel good. But mm -hmm. then the rain begins, then the, the happiness disappears, or this uh, good mood disappears. So if we are guided by emotions, we will be very uh, going ups and down, and that's not what the Bible speaks. Actually, very interesting, here's the testimony that says, uh, or the, the, the explanation from the author says, the Bible does not use the word emotions. It is, uh, um, it is the, 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 the spirit of a man, that's the word, the word of God says. Feeling of, of, as often deceiving emotions are not sure um, safe safeguard for they are variable and subject to external circumstances. And that's what you mentioned very important in the question number two. It's not so important how the things are outside. Important mm -hmm. is inside. We need to have a sure relationship with Jesus Christ from inside, then the circumstances, not only they will not remove or move us out, but we will be able to uh, conduct or to manage the circumstances or, or to, to influence the circumstances. And that's what the Lord uh, wants us to be, light and salt in the world, people who does not depend on circumstances but people who create circumstances here is the sex the six questions <clears throat> as in this first deception true um, um, or taught which sense uh, does Satan often control minds that's very mm -hmm. very interesting yes. question actually can Satan control the mind yes here he said, as in his first deception, okay. through Satan, we, we, we refer back to the, how he, de he deceived our first parents, Eve. She was uh, attracted by the outward looking of the fruit. And uh, it may not say that when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant for the eyes, and the tree was desirable for, for uh, make one wise, she took it, not because uh, God permitted it or not because it was uh, needed for eternal life or for health, but it was attractive in the eyes. And she believed the words of Satan that it will make somebody to be wise. So like, was, this is what will be done with miracles, with all these uh, emotions sessions. People look from outside how people, how I feel from outside and now they think that this is, uh, that is what Satan will bring and he will make a man to take, be taken out by this deception. Thank you very much. So Satan actually does not enforce 
our mind, or he does not put thoughts in our mind, but what he do is he try to dialogue with us. He try to tempt, present things, read that, look at that movie, and then when we pay attention, then he deceptively also manipulate our mind. That's what the, it's exactly the, the examples from Genesis, how he manipulate Eve. So mm -hmm. she was finally, she finally agreed to eat from the forbidden uh, fruit. And that is uh, how deceptively actually that he tries that the circumstances press and force us to react this way or another way. And uh, <clears throat> that's the tool which the Satan use our emotions mm -hmm. sometimes i will love that so much my daughter my son and then i am ready to permit anything they ask even if it's not according to the will of god mm -hmm. so that's how the emotions for example overall the mind sometimes we see danger in a place where we say no i want to go because i want to yeah then we run into the danger well, many examples can be given, but let's continue to the next question, and that's very important. Uh, <clears throat> actually, before we move to the next one, here is one testimony that is very important, a desire of ages. It mentioned appetite, beauty, and intelligence. These are a kind of deceptive, um, uh, imaginable uh, attractions in the world, uh, the, you know, the appetite, uh, our, our outlook, and um, our education, and all these things are deceptive because the beauty disappear one day, the appetite has to be sanctified, have to be formed, molded, and improved, and the, intel the real intelligence is the understanding of the will of God, and not that much of getting the worldly recognition <clears throat> so it's just an important portion of that question that have to be mentioned but moving forward to the seventh question what will be outstanding in the last days and what will be lacking so how the people in the last days will face these challenges for Sharima what's the prophecy says that the Word of God yes here uh, especially when I take the note from Timothy, uh, we are told that these last days will be perilous or dangerous times because people will lose the real godliness and his and the power uh, deny the power of God, but they will turn into human inventions like these uh, uh, false revivals. And uh, we see also. According to Jesus, uh, he said that uh, God does not uh, accept in his kingdom people who just uh, call his name, but he wants people who will do his will. They are the one who will enter the kingdom of heaven. So the doing of God's will in these last days will be very less but uh, people will deal with things which are very spiritual, dangerous. But they will see that those are the things which make for the kingdom. And this is the falsehood which this Jesus will uh, bring. Uh, not all who call Lord, Lord, who will uh, uh, be accepted by God, but I say, but it, those who will do what God has said, what God has instructed. Thank you very much. If you remember the last lessons, was uh, one of the questions will was uh, take the, uh, telling us about the um, theory of the truth and uh, experience of the truth. Yes. And here we have the same things. What will be the outstanding of the last days that will be lacking? Will be lacking a true piety and godliness. That is the <clears throat> that's the real. Things. It will be a lot of religious people, they will speak about God, they will uh, uh, do like, you know, they will do a lot of advertising, they will have a lot of emotions uh, in, in, the, in the religious world. But when it's the things about action and taking decisions about the truth, 
then all these people are going away. And uh, once again, I remember Peter, you know, he was also very emotional. I love you, Jesus Christ. I will give my life for you, he mm -hmm. says, right? But when the test come, he no, fell. he fell. He mm -hmm. denied even he was, I haven't seen that man, he says. It's mm -hmm. incredible how quickly change decisions taking based on emotions. But based on deep conviction and spiritual inspiration, that's something that lasts. And endure. Yes, Brother Shri. And the notice says that we are not only to say, I believe, uh -huh. but we needed to do the truth. Drug and the world today the always say, I am saved. Mm -hmm. I, be, I love Jesus. I believe Jesus. But when you come to the true word of God that keep his commandments, which Jesus said, they will come to with a lot of arguments. That's right. So this shows that the, the, the prophecy of uh, last days is getting fulfilled. That's right, that's yeah. right. Praxis the truth. Have yeah. a real experience. I mean, there are a lot of theoretical issues in the Word of God. Uh, Christ our righteousness and uh, righteousness by faith mm. and imputed, imparted righteousness, mm. Mm. things that perhaps sound differ difficult for many of the members. But in reality, all these things is experience. It has to be experience with our Lord Jesus Christ. If it's not, uh, if have not arrived to a level of experience that is still a level of theory, it doesn't help us for nothing. This is, we are still in the beginning of the way and we need to develop this in our lives. <clears throat> Going forward, we are coming closer to the most important part of the lesson. What methods used in false revivals are not from the Lord? I think this is very important, especially um, warning our people, giving them to be attentive, not to participate in such a, uh, places, and not to go in such a places, because we know how the devil deceitfully can take our mind and convince us in the in the wrong things, right? Mm -hmm. But what kind of methods are used by these false prophets and these false revivals? Yeah, here is interesting to see how the prophecy could see far from the time of Moses. He could say, more Amos, he could say, "Take thou away from me the noise of thy songs." For I will not hear the melody of thy viols. So this is a prophecy by Amos, which we predict what will take place in our time, in the time of the end. That you see today, uh, in the note it is mentioned that uh, 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 what will take place, they will be shouting in the churches, lot of noise, they will be making drums, they will be making different, different uh, types of uh, music, styles, and all these things, plus dancing. So these methods could be, were uh, uh, pro uh, prophesied in the prophecy, Bible prophecy, that God will not listen to this type of music. But also we can see right now in in our time, it is something that is taking place in almost in all Christian churches. Now, even in Adventistism, now it is coming with great force. Uh, we see drum music, also with the, with this uh, um, charismatic, di uh, charismatic with yes. the disco music. Mm. All these are entering with great force. We should understand this is not the type of music that is pleasing before the eye of God. Thank you very much. I will uh, summarize the whole things, the methods uh, of the, the false revivals. Uh, we can say entertainment. 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 They, it could be music, it is, especially in America that's very popular to have computer games for the kids. So they don't need to listen to the service, they can stay on the computer games and they can play there day and night if they want to. They have all kinds of entertainment, sports, music, 
and that is what people are mostly attracted to they want to have entertainment but the Word of God say something different different and we're going to see actually most in detail the next uh, Sabbath uh, the, the spiritual revivals what kind of uh, foundation they have <clears throat> and here is actually just to uh, summarize a little bit I wish to that we see the second testimony the Holy Spirit never reviles itself in such a methods in such a bad law of noise this is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods for making <coughs> of non infect the pure sense elevating uh, ennobling sanctifying truth of this time and it doesn't mean we cannot use music and we shall not have uh, songs or choirs in our churches far away from that but there is a music that elevates that sanctifies and there is a music that is based on our human carnal desires and that's the difference and that is what actually the, the false revivals we use. They will use the desire and the needs of the flesh. And satisfying that, of course, they will achieve a big popularity because people will be attracted to it. Moving forward, so we're going to see the next questions. What change must take place in a person's mind before he acknowledged the heaven's claims? very important this lesson is related very much to the mind and the mindset of the person <clears throat> reminding me the first world war actually that was uh, uh, perhaps part of the problem the people were members in the church but not so much because of this deep dedication and conversion but because of the entertainment, uh, because of the choirs, because of the big congregations, because of the ni maybe nice uh, fellowship there, and uh, <clears throat> many attractions that can be that uh, attract the person. But if not real conversion, when the test comes, mm -hmm. then it's revealed a total failure. <clears throat> Let's see the question number nine. What change must take place in a person's mind, brother? Sure. Yeah, yes, the text in Romans 12 verse 2 is very interesting how it uh, takes a summary of what we should do. He said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So here I can see we are told, First thing in everything we do, especially under this phenomenon of mesmerism, of emotion, we should first of all be transformed by renewing of our mind. Our mind should think thoroughly well, what is the will of God in my life? So we should be transformed first, and second now to prove, the Bible says prove, when it's the word prove means we need to make sure whatever we do maybe in singing in playing music whatever but first of all we should see is it good is it acceptable is it according to the perfect will of god so this we should put on the forefront and when we see it is in conformity is in perfect agreement with the plan of god then we can go forward. For example, many times I, when it comes to these emotions, I am singing and dancing in the churches, put away the miracles which people do. First of all, I try to go to the, to the Revelation and see in Revelation chapter 4 and 5, we are taken to the presence of God and we see how angels, how the, um, the, the other beings in heaven, they worship God. And you see, they do in reverence, in quietude, in a, such a, a, a very harmonious and in a very respective way. But they don't shout, they don't... So this is an example we should, when we say we should get renewed, 
which can be renewed by studying the will of God. And that is where we get a proper, a right guide. Uh, when we see miracles, when we see these sensations or emotions, we should go to the Bible and investigate how and what God wants really. You know? Amen, amen, wonderful. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Actually, a change, what kind of change must happen? A conversion, right? A new, a new man has to be born and it has to be visible, the fruits of the Spirit. Before, uh, before any other miracle takes place, the mm. fruits of the Spirit have to change first my character. Then I could reveal also something else. So God can use me to perform a miracle because we should not say that the people of God should never have seen any miracle because that's not true. Mm. I mean, God performs miracles in His church as well, mm. and not just once, many times. But uh, the difference between the miracles of the devil and the miracles of God is that the biggest miracle first working is changing of God. That's right. Yeah. Cleansing of the soul, cleansing of the heart. Mm. And then other miracles can take place like healings and and other supernatural appearances. By beholding Christ, we become changed. And that is very important, I think. Not beholding miracles, not beholding the church institutions, not beholding the power, uh, the human power, but beholding Christ. And that's why we need to understand the only uh, important uh, things in our spiritual life is Jesus Christ. He's the beginning. He's the end. And here is the question number 10 that talks actually about this. What alone can keep a Christians from failing amid of the last day's deceptions? Where is the only refugee for all of us? Yes. Uh, our safety, our refuge, as brother we made it, is to put diligence in looking unto Jesus, in also working hard to get his uh, virtues, the Holy Spirit working in us. But indeed, this need to great dedication, a great effort on our part in knowing that we are living in very dangerous times. There are a lot of, of falsehood, there are a lot of uh, cheating things. So we need to f work hard. And here it means to start thoroughly the Word of God, to pray to God to give a right understanding when there are a lot of false understanding of these things, but also to work hard to practice whatever we learn as we said from the beginning that God don't want only to, to, to mere words that I believe, but He wants to practice what we believe. And this will help us to be grounded, to be established in Jesus such that uh, we cannot easily be moved because we know the truth by experience. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Uh, we need to have Christ as a central point in our life. The welfare of you souls and your internal happiness depend upon whether your foundation is built upon Christ. And it is uh, imagining that our foundation is our richness. What happened? One day the richness disappeared, bankruptcy, then what? Suicide. Mm -hmm. End of everything. But if our foundation is Christ, there is an eternal foundation. Mm -hmm. Nothing can move us out. If we are rich, if we are poor, if we are sick, if we are uh, healthy, no matter of circumstances we live, we always will be happy, will be satisfied. We will feel the presence of Christ in our life. And that is what was missing in the First World War among the Adventists because the circumstances changed and immediately the entire church changed their positions. The church positions cannot be changed based on circumstances. They have to be changed only if God's Father wants us to change based on the scriptures. And that was the failure of uh, the Adventist church at, at the time of the First World War. And may God protect us that we don't change depending on circumstances, but we follow the scriptures as the Lord Jesus Christ have taught, telling us. Amen. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, um, enjoy our Sabbath school lesson. Don't forget to enroll and uh, follow us either in YouTube channel or you can follow us in the ministerial webpage. And uh, may the Lord bless you. Have a wonderful Sabbath. And also many greetings to Africa. Right, Brother Shurima? Amen. Thank Amen. you. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and see you with the help of the Lord the next week. Amen. Amen.